The Blue Jays played this weekend. Oh, yeah. They sure did. Yeah, they did uh, mm-hmm. for the first time. It was actually, I got to tell you, uh, I always say that the first series of the year feels the most important until we get into fall baseball. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. I, yesterday I felt like the season was on the line. Okay. Oh, oh, damn it. Okay. So <laughs> I, I want to do today. The segment is blue Jays snap judgments. Okay. Yes. So it's just blue Jays snap judgments. It's things that we feel in our mm-hmm. gut, things that we watched from the first series, the Toronto blue Jays played that we feel deep in our bones are actually going mm-hmm. to transpire over the course of the season or already are true. And one of the things that I actually have is my first blue Jays snap judgment is I'm stealing this bit from you is uh, what do you call You say, yeah, the must win game as decided yeah, by mu- me. Yes. Must win game is decided by me. Uh, I didn't want to tweet it because there's yeah. too many people who are like, actually, and yeah. it's just not fun. I you know? should have done it. But yes, I didn't have internet. I had to watch. Okay, yeah. I had to watch the game on my phone projected onto yeah. my TV. So I couldn't tweet at the same time. Man, I, I use my Rogers ignite free plug for those guys. I use my Rogers uh, ignite when I was on the train on the way back mm-hmm. uh, uh, from my visit. And I watched the blue Jays game and it was just delightful. Like I technology having yeah. that ability. Yeah. And, oh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, that On my Rogers phone, I was able to yeah, that's, watch <laughs> the game. Yeah. On my TV. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty it's crazy. really good. It's pretty crazy. No, but my biggest, one of my biggest takeaways from the weekend was yesterday was a Ben Ennis must win game. You're right. Like 100%. If, imagine this scenario. They're one in three today. Yeah. Gossman didn't look good. Yeah. And what was that guy? Al, what Alexander? Tyler, Tyler Alexander? Alexander yeah. That slop tossing. Yeah. Horrific. That guy has to be the worst pitcher in baseball. Like I, I refuse. Yeah. They went. He's the bulk guy. I went bulk in what way? Like yeah. he's going to he gives up bulk runs. Yeah, he's. <laughs> I've never felt. No, but he was like Ryan Yarbrough incarnate, and no, Buck but... did a good job, like of of pointing out that those guys give. The yeah, Jays they did. Fits in well, maybe because terms. Yar Yarbrough was name brand, and he had been over some uh, off brand Ryan Yarbrough. This, no, yeah, off brand, not the same. No, he was not the same. Anyways, no. it's like yeah, when Isaiah kind of fell off a step into the dish, and he's just like, I'm all over this guy. You know, it's bad. <laughs> you know. It's really bad. Yeah, to the tune of a single. Yeah, two of them. But they were red hot. They were sure. red hot singles. They were right. they were juicy singles. Yeah. Anyways, I thought that yesterday was a must win because if the Jays came out of that one and three, scoring no runs like they did in the middle two games, three total over those two games. It, exactly. Had they had a game where they did not score runs and Gossman ended up losing, and you were going into this series. It must win with, with Bowden Francis it, on the hill. It was a, it was a must win game for the Toronto blue Jays. And so the season is off to a good start. Who wouldn't have taken starting 500 against the Rays on the road. You know what? I like my sneaky thing about yeah. baseball too. And my feels and like yeah. how I feel good. This is like, they didn't fritter away a win too. It's like the losses were losses yeah. and the wins were wins. I will say, I didn't really appreciate that in the one game when they were only down three runs that John Schneider went to West Parsons who, yeah, I, I don't mean, think we'll be on the team for very long. I was like, yeah. wow, you made the team? Like, who yeah. is that? What's the guy, guy with the, the the minor league ERA last year approaching five? Yeah. But, okay, so I saw that they had to DFA Yosver Zulueta. Yes. Who, who at one point was, was like the hot, savior. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was hot, <laughs> yeah. hot in the streets. People were like, yo, it's fair. Yo, it's fair. That's, that's, <laughs> they really were. They were singing his name, Yasver. Yeah. I went, how bad are the guys behind Wes Parsons that they couldn't make the baseball team? Like you're watching him and it like just, you, you shouldn't keep playing anymore. If you're over the age of 25 and you couldn't make the team over Wes Parsons, it should be like a wake up call reality call that it's, it's done. It's not happening for you. Yeah. Wes Parsons, I believe spent some time in Asia, whether it was Japan or the KBO and yeah, he's approaching 30 years old and yeah. It's not his first foray into the major leagues of baseball, but it takes all, all sorts, right? Don't, like don't you love that, though, when it's like, he's living his dream. It's just like, <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Wow. bang. I mean, like, it, what, he only he... gave up one run, though, right? Yeah, but it was uh, not. It was No, it was three it was runs. Three. Yeah, I was going to say. It was oh. definitely more than one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I guess there was an error in there. I was like, no, he's, no, no he, he, gave he gave up, up the game. Three. It was done. As soon as he stepped in there, it was like, the game is yeah, over. Yeah, but like, here's what I do. Why I not mentally... just have a mercy rule then at that point? Like, mm-hmm. why not jo- have just That's... John Schneider go out there and be West like, Parsons hey. Parsons is the mercy rule. No, but though. instead of playing it out, though, he's like, hey, just tack on three runs. Like, give them to whoever you want, oh, yeah. whoever's struggling. Wow. Give them the stats. The thing is, they don't allow you to put position players into games and in positions that close anymore. So, like, that's as close as you can get as a Wes Parsons. Reverse yeah. victory cigar, whatever you call that. Yeah, uh, white flag. Yeah, it's white flag. Bring it. up the white flag. You know what I like, like though? Yes. 
but they, they only scored two runs, right? So you're yeah, like, ah, never going to lose that was, anyway. I hate that. Yeah, I hate that. They lose. No, that was – Defense that, was awful in that game. Yeah, it really was. But there's there was definitely the reason – part of the – and, like, to close the loop on why yesterday was a must win uh-huh. is the two losses were way too familiar. That yes. feeling, that feeling of, well, you might as well bring in Wes Parsons because you're down three runs yeah, and, like, score. you'll never do that. Meanwhile, I watched the Dodgers play uh, two nights ago. Or yes, they had two comeback wins. Where Yankees, it was like, I think all four of their wins were comeback wins. Yeah, but that was it. It was just like Mookie Betts hit a home run, and then all their guys drove in runs, and then Max Muncy steps up to the plate, and you're like, oh, my God, there's no let up. Oh, right. You're not out of these ball games. You can actually – it's like you're allowed to win down three runs. That happens in baseball. You're, it's, it's possible to do. You know what? Like everybody's memory is so short. Yeah. I remember these things. Okay, what do you remember? I remember April, them having some incredible comebacks. They they yeah. had a series in Anaheim where it was like, oh, my yeah. goodness, what an incredible at bat again by Matt Chapman, yeah. who had 45 doubles, yeah. like uh, just off the top of my head. He's the like, gr- greatest player who ever lived. Though. He literally, yeah. I think, set the franchise record for doubles in a month. Yeah. He was the best player in baseball. Yeah. He literally was the American League player of the month yeah, he was. in April. Yeah. And Bo Bichette had he a huge. Was, and he would never be again. And Vlad had a great month of yeah. April, too, you will yeah. recall. Yeah. Because they played very few games at home. Because yeah. he didn't hit his first home home run until yeah. the end of June. So, yeah, let's just – and I remember remember the Rays were off to the 13-0 and start. Blue Jays handed them their first series loss of the season. First loss of the season, first series loss of the season. And then the wheels fell off mm-hmm. subsequently. But April was good for this team a season ago, so before you start going nuts. Well, no, I'm going nuts because today's Blue Jays snap yeah, judgments. Sure. Okay, so I, I, have a, I have a lot more. So do you want me to keep going or you want to go? Um – I don't know. What do you, it's your show. You tell me. No, what to well, do. It's, it's, I can, I'm offering you either. We can take turns or I can kind of do some and then you can do some. <sighs> do you, you want me to, to, to do the thing that I'm most passionate about coming out of the yeah, weekend? Yeah. Yeah. What's your number one snap? I just did it with Joe Siddle, but like, I feel oh, like wow, I'm, so you were already doing the things. Well, I, mm. and I feel no, like I'm cool. going to keep doing it until no, that's great. Until I'm proven correct here or wrong. Okay. I feel Blue like I'm, snap judgment. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills that, David Schneider is good and needs uh-huh. an opportunity to play every day. And it might be in left field because Dalton Varsha looks eerily similar to the guy that we've seen last year. Who's so this is already just Ben his confirmation bias hours. Like you were like, well, because you bought all the David Schneider stock. You've already like heavily invested in this take that he's going to be like live up to his nickname. That Correct. He will be. <laughs> yeah. I don't call him babe. I actually hate that nickname, babe Schneider. I don't, I don't like it at all. No, he's... I do call him babe now though. Yeah, I know you, I, I don't like that, but it's hard like not to. All. No, it's really easy for me. I never yeah. do it. I've never <laughs> done it in my entire life. No, I don't know. Okay. What are we doing here? It's like, we yeah. just forget about the 35 games that he played last year. And it's like, Oh, he yeah. had a couple of games where he struck out. Okay. It's like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, the guy wasn't going to have a 1400 OPS. He's not likely to have a 1000 OPS, but mm-hmm. the process remains good. He doesn't swing it at balls. And when he gets a pitch that he's looking for in a, in a hitter's count, he hits it super hard. Mm-hmm. And the path to playing time for him, I think is it's the toughest for any of the, the blue Jays part-time players mm-hmm. like Ernie Clement. And we can talk about, I, I think he, he's part of a shared Snap judgment after the, no, the yeah, weekend. I, I, of I have a piggyback off this, yeah. Yeah, but like you can see the path to playing time for Ernie Clement yeah. because of the defense. But for for David Schneider, it's like okay, well, the defense is obviously diminished from what Dalton Varsho brings in left field and mm-hmm. second base. It seems like they're they're hell bent on on the Cavan Biggio second half thing being the real Cavan Biggio. So where where does he play? And they have a full time DH who's making thirteen million bucks. Mm-hmm. Where does he play? I, I think he's going to force their hand because I, I think he's legit good, like above average offensive player who gets on base and hits home runs. So that's so, but this is, this is the thing for you eh, is that he doesn't, doesn't swing at bad pitches and he's got pop for the, the position. Those are the, this is like the full premise based on those, like those things. Yeah. What else yeah. would you like? No, no, I'm just curious. Like that's the, this is why, well, you're well he does, no, but no, but he does the thing that nobody else does, which is like, mm-hmm. Oh, Ernie Clement is high as you can be on him. He, is not a everyday major leaguer hasn't been because he doesn't take walks or hit for power. Like he's mm-hmm. always hit for a high average. That's cool. And it's really cool. If you do it to the degree of Ichiro Suzuki, but if you're not Ichiro or Luis arise, mm-hmm. like, yeah, you, you got to hit for power, which mm-hmm. Davis Schneider does. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know why they, they seem to think that Dalton Varsho is going to be able to do that better than, than Davis Schneider. Obviously it's like the, there's more to his Oof. game than, than that. Yeah. But like I could see, so if it's not going to happen at second base, like, and uh, there's another snap judgment that ties into this that yeah. we can talk about. That's next. Yeah. That's I'm uh, the piggyback off. This is that I, I don't think that Isaiah Connor Falefa is going to be the team's everyday third baseman or that he's going to play as many games as 
uh, we initially prognosticated when looking at this roster. Like, he he doesn't make that much money. Okay, it's mm-hmm. not a it's not a Justin Turner. You make thirteen million dollars thing, right? It's a yeah. He's gonna be on the roster. Yeah, he's yeah. on the roster, and yeah. he'll play third base primarily when he is playing. But my snap judgment was they're going to find creative ways to get Ernie Clement in there because the bat to ball thing is just very real. And they're going to find ways to make sure that, yeah, they get David Schneider in. And I think one of those ways is to give him, yeah, uh, looks at that position potentially as well. I don't know if I see Schneider playing third base. Sorry, infield two and then kicking over yeah. and playing Ernie three and making sure that there are guys that are, yeah. Even Kevin Biggio playing third base. Yeah. I mean, I would take it a step further and say that, like, give me Ernie Clement every day, third baseman right now. Already, over, yeah. Over okay, Isaiah so Kiner then fine. Yeah, then I'm with you. Okay, here's 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 how I'm taking Blue Jay snap judgment. The, the Isaiah yeah, Kiner Falefa. You soft pedaled it. Come on. What's the going Isaiah Kiner Falefa signing is bad already, and they, <laughs> n- they really didn't need him. Like, they had Isaiah Kiner Falefa on the team, and his name was Ernie Clement, and yeah. it was totally fine, and yeah. you didn't need to spend $7 million. Agreed. Yeah. the guy with the career OPS plus of 85 or whatever that has shown no signs of ever hitting the baseball 85. He's 81. He's 81. Okay. Yeah. The the guy who's never shown signs ever of hitting any baseballs, Mm -hmm. despite playing in ballparks where you're allowed to hit the baseball. uh, He he's not going to all of a sudden hit the baseball on a team that doesn't, shouldn't have no. a bottom three of no. just corpses. And he's yeah. possibly one of those. Yeah. And I'll never, I need a 30 for 30 deep dive. Uh, next time we have Robert Murray on, uh-huh. I need the executives that said that he's the signing of the off season what? to what? name. Like <laughs> if I was a baseball fan and I found out that my executive said, Hey, difference between, Hey, that's a good death signing and signing of the off season. And this is a snap judgment for me too. I think that front offices are way too obsessed with like getting a deal on a guy, you know, like they're like all of us. Everybody mm. wants a deal, right? Yeah. You buy a shirt and they go like, it's 15% off and you like that shirt uh, so much more. Cause you want to tell people, Hey, I got this shirt for cheaper. Yeah. And I think that the blue Jays kind of look at Isaiah Connor Falefa and went, Hey, if you look at his war compared to Chapman from the last three months uh, and the fact that we only paid him seven and he got this, yeah. like, I, I think that there's an obsession with the that defense and it's fine. It's, <laughs> it's not Okay. Ernie Clement might be the better defender. We're that, just learning uh, about Ernie Clement. Both guys can play shortstop, but Ernie Clement can play dude, if, if shortstop. You're, if you're going to be that bat, I need you to be Andrelton Simmons. Like yeah. I need you to be yes. like Sterling where every game you go, oh, well, he made that play and it yep. saved a run. And yep. Isaiah Connor Falefa had one where he like booted it. And I, I went, know. you can't boot it ever. You can, no. you can have, Even, here's yeah. your uh, limit for boots. That, that was it. That's yep. the end. Yeah. Well, you got to go. Is that soft pedal? Is that, no, okay. There's better. the true, that's, that's the true snap. No, judgment. I, I can't I stand agree. him already. I was yeah. like, oh my God, please. No, no, like this guy's yeah. a nightmare. And I don't, I, I feel like I've been put in this position because I, I started in this position with IKF. I feel like I've been put in this position with Ernie okay. Clement because I'm not as high on early uh, Ernie Clement as, as anybody was coming into the season. No. Because again, I look at the minor league numbers. And I'm like, yeah, this guy hits for pretty high average, but no walks and, and no power. So that that's fine. So like, what's the best optimistic projection is the hits like 270 um, with like a 700 OPS. But yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, that's better than Isaiah Connor Falefa's entire career. Mm. And defensively, I, early returns like Ernie Clement better. Plus, he's a mm-hmm. Buffalo guy like that too. Yeah, uh, like he's got the nickname. He's got. He, you know what? Does I like? he have the nickname? People calling him Big Earn? I think we. Oh well, maybe that's just us. I I I want okay because uh, I've never. All I want is to be a guy that puts somebody's nickname on best like baseball reference. Oh no, but like I what. When, well, I gave Alec Manoa when I had him on. I was like, the people that are fans are you. I'm naming the Manoans. Manoans, yeah, that's good. And then good, he went like, to the podium after his first start and was like, the Manoans were loud out there. And yeah, I went, this is incredible. Good. That's good. This is great. See, that's, yeah, that's, okay, that's a, but something I don't tangible. Think, I want the baseball yeah. reference. And the thing yeah. I keep going to is like Mike Wilner got but Scott Downs snake face, like is on his baseball reference page. Snake face as his uh, like official <laughs> nickname okay. because people didn't like Scott Downs because he didn't have like an intimidating presence. And he's like, what? Do you wish he had like a tattoo of a snake on his face? Well, okay. But I will say this though. This is an unfair thing because if you were to do it, it would be such a bigger accomplishment than someone who was a broadcaster yes. of the team. Oh yeah. Because if you're I'm a bro- nobody, no, but that's no, no, no. It's not that. It's that <laughs> if you're a broadcaster of the team and you just say yeah, it on air, direct, it's yeah. done. Yeah. You're right. Like you've decided it. You yeah. actually have that. <laughs> yeah. All broadcasters have that's that. Like true. if Dan Shulman yeah. tomorrow wanted to be like, and he, oh, look at Bambi out here. 
<laughs> oh, here comes Bambi. People will be That's like, I guess he's called power Bambi. That, yeah, you yeah. should wield more mightily, or at least I would. Yeah, <laughs> and, and people will be like, do you know? Oh, chicken legs yeah. out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. So it's like, yeah, we, you can start that. Yeah. No, but uh, you know what I love about big Ernie Clement, too? It has to be big Ern. Um, When there's, like, young, uh, like, when it's, like, ba- young baseball, right? Minor league base, not minor league, uh, youth baseball. Yeah. There's always, like, the little skinny, scrawny kid who can feel this position well and always, like, makes contact, and he's, like, the coach's son. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. there's one kid on the travel team who's like, hey, this guy's he's one of our best, most skilled guys. He's the guy who has the bat to ball. He runs. He does everything right. And he fits in with the team and he's a good guy. And he's been playing ever since he was a little tiny kid. And Ernie Clement just reeks of that. Like he's on the he's mm-hmm. on the little league team. That's mm-hmm. it. He's the little league yeah. coach's son. But vibe. that's annoying if he stinks. Yeah, but th- no, no, no. But those guys don't normally stink. That's what I'm saying. They're good, but they never have the projection of being like, oh, if this guy was actually in a more athletic body. Oh, if this guy was actually stronger, bigger. Can you bigger. imagine being Ernie Clement and looking over at Isaiah Kiner Falafa making whatever, you know, it's yeah. like half a million dollars? Yeah, yeah. Like, no. Yeah, no, no. That's That makes sense. No, because life he, is fair. Yeah, sure. life is okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, no, here's the thing, though. It would be good for me because I would be reminded that, man, if I could just stick around yeah. and I could just be... 81 OPS plus. Yeah. If I can just be 81 OPS plus, someone's going to hand me like life changing money. He's 28 though. Is the problem there. That is a bit of a problem. <laughs> that is a bit of a problem in terms of getting he's, paid. Uh, he's not arb- arbitration eligible until next year and f- not a free agent until 2029. Yeah. That'll be difficult. <laughs> That'll be a rough one for him. So the seven and a half million dollar IKF contract, probably not coming to Ernie. Yeah, no. But that's, but more reason to, to say, uh, Ernie, but, big earn. Yeah. I just, I already know that IKF in big spots, this is the snap judgment to close, is that he, when he comes up in big spots, it's going to piss me off. The only big earn thing is that because he is such a ball and play guy, he's going to hit into so many double no, plays and be frustrating too. Like, like maybe the fastest guy on the team. This was, I think it was Arden that alerted me to this fact. Like his sprint speed literally. It's faster than Varsho? Yes. Mm. He's a, the fastest guy. In, yeah, Varsho's base running is like not just his speed. Yeah. Like he's just a really good base, base runner, runner which we've yeah. seen. We, he went first to second on that pop-up uh, in foul territory yeah. over the yeah, weekend. Yeah. That was, he's, that no, was, he's smart. I was like, oh my God, he's on second base. Dude, well Varsho, Varsho's a weird guy where when he's on the bases, mm-hmm. you're like, dude, you're so enjoyable. Yes. Like you're actually so enjoyable on the bases. The problem is he doesn't get there enough. And here's another snap judgment. This is a mini one that I didn't have prepared. I'm done with Dar- Dalton Varsho bunts. Okay. Like Funny. I know it was effective, but when there's runners on and you're in the cleanup spot, you're the five hitter. No. Like I, I don't want to see bunting anymore. I want to like swing away, you know, the mm. movie signs. That's yeah. it. Hey, <laughs> swing away. Right into the face of that oh. alien. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Swing the bat at the alien's face. Swing was, the bat. Swing the bat. Take uh, the bat off the your spoiler, shoulder. Spoiler warning. Yeah. But yeah, no, to me, yeah, I had a snap judgment that's kind of similar. It was like, this guy's already terrified that it's it's going pear shaped. Like he's he is not at all confident in the changes he made in the offseason. And it's one thing to like, hey, against the lefty starter, like you try it once a game. Mm-hmm. I feel like every at bat or like mm-hmm. half of the at bats, he's trying to lay down. A base hit, Bonte. Yeah, and you mentioned it in an RBI spot yesterday. The runner on third base with two outs. He's mm-hmm. trying to come up with the base hit bunt. It's alarming. I, uh, I just don't. I just don't like the bunt thing. It's just I, I get it. It's worked for you in the past, and yeah. it's been fine. But I, I'm I'm not into it. Yeah. Uh, here's I got another your, your snap, snap judgment. Snap time? judgment right, turn. on another one of the outfielders. Yeah. The guy that didn't play yesterday. Yeah. We didn't talk enough about Kevin Kiermaier's offensive season being an outlier mm-hmm. last year. Like that. He's Never really been that guy over the course of an entire season playing that many games. He had an OPS plus of a, of 104 at the age of 33 playing 129 games in elite, elite defense. We didn't talk mm-hmm. enough about him and the not probable, like likely regression of his offense. Like he still plays like, but the idea that he's closer, like that you might have two Dalton Var shows in your outfield right mm-hmm. now, like is very much in play. Like when, Remember the conversations we were having about Kevin Kiermaier when he signed mm-hmm. as a free agent last year? And you're like, oh, well, it's fine. He's going to be the fourth outfielder because, like, his offense doesn't really play. And he's like, no, I've been assured. Like, I got an everyday job. And we're like, what? Mm-hmm. And then he backed it up with his play. And you're like, holy cow, yeah. No, I'm happy with that guy. He's the ninth hole hitter. Well, part of that also is he's not hitting ninth anymore mm-hmm. <laughs> because of the the weakness at the bottom of this order. He has to play higher than the ninth, or I guess they like the Kevin Biggio walk potential at the bottom of the lineup. Anyways. Yep. The offense that you got out of Kevin Kiermaier, that might not be coming back this year. It's likely not to come back at the age of 
35 playing the the offense or the defensive workload that he's asked to carry on turf. Yeah. So you don't listen to my show when you're in the car. You listen to other podcasts. I do sometimes, no, but, but I get a lot of calls. No, but I actually have. When you said we didn't talk enough, I actually have been. I brought this up quite a bit where I went. Really? I didn't talk about it. Yeah, it was like positive, negative regression, guys. There's all this discussion about positive regression. But one of the big things was they got <laughs> quite a bit out of Kiermaier to the tune of for a while he was the nine hitter and he was the best nine hitter in all of baseball. Yep. That that's what they were getting from him. Had the only RBI in the two game postseason yes. series. And so when I was looking at positive and negative regression guys, we were doing hey positive for Kirk and positive for Varsho and positive for Bo and Vladdy uh, and Springer. But no, he was a notable negative regression guy offensively. My thing is, I don't believe they're going to lean on him as much this year. I think that what they're going to do is exactly that, which is kick Varsho over to center and find more time for your boy David Schneider. And also find more time for Kevin Biggio because here is my Blue Jay snap judgment. Mm -hmm. I actually have more respect for Kevin Biggio's game, like his ability to hang around the majors. This is a guy I wrote off many times. I've probably written off Kevin Biggio a conservative 48 times where I've just gone. I I don't want to see it anymore. Right. Kevin Biggio up at the plate where there's runners in scoring position and he won't swing the bat. And he's just uh, guys start pumping strikes and they go, Oh, right. In fact, I would say it's almost as frustrating weirdly to have watched pitchers walk him yeah. in certain spots where you go, hey, man, all you needed to actually do was throw him strikes. I can't believe that you were trying to throw him weird breaking stuff yeah. off the plate. That's exactly what he wanted from you because the book was so obvious. But now I'm just kind of – I watched Kevin Biggio over this weekend, and he drew, what, three walks? Yeah, I think he had three walks, three RBIs. He hit a home run in the first game. He's just – he's respectable at the dish. He can play multiple positions. He's not what we had hoped that he was going to be <laughs> – you know, plus at all of those positions, but I just think that he's a plus on the roster. And when you're talking about like guys that can be at the bottom of the order and when they put him in that nine hole and they say, you can actually get on base for when the lineup turns over. Yeah. I like that for him. All respect for Kevin Biggio is a snap judgment. I, I feel maybe part of it is that they've had mm. so many bad guys. And part of it is even more of an Isaiah kind of Falefa effect where I'm like yeah. this guy over you, but respect to Kevin Biggio. Think that he's yeah. developed like a nice little career for himself. Yeah. <laughs> Going town to town. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I got a lot of time for Kevin Biggio. I don't think that he's infallible. I think the organization does value him too much. Like they, they don't Schneider loves him. I think has. they want to play him like every day against lefties. Like given their druthers, they're like, this guy's mm-hmm. an everyday player. Well, I'm like, no, David Schneider needs to play. Like if you're not playing David Schneider at second base against lefties, where are the starts going to come? And you're right. Like maybe you can only afford one of, of Dalton Varsho and, and Kevin Kiermaier in the lineup at one time. And, so left field ends up the David Schneider position, but this team seems so leveraged on defense. And I guess I don't know enough about David Schneider in left field to say that he's a significant negative. I, I think compared to Dalton Varsho, he will be sure. But I, I don't, I don't think that they they're too pleased with left field being the landing spot for David Schneider. I mean, ideally I think they want to play him at the DH, but the, yeah, they got a 40 year old guy making 13 million bucks. Sure, there. Either way, play Davis at second base and play Kevin in left field. Like, you know, yeah. there's ways of doing this where both guys can play and you yep. don't need as much from yeah. Uh, Kevin Kiermaier, who I don't think they're going to need as much. The only thing that I would say, uh, it's not troubling, but if you're projecting the idea of less Kiermaier this year is he publicly came out and talked about how the Jays coveted him and the Jays promised yeah, him playing well, time I mean, and, yeah, you know why nobody yeah. wanted to give him the money and the term want that he yeah. wanted yeah. is because they're like, oh, yeah, the mid-30s guy who had yep. one of the best years of his career offensively and was just a barely above average offensive player, but that was good considering yeah. all-time great glove in center field. But they're like, no, we're not giving you two, three years at you know, 15 million per. It's just yeah. not happening. Yeah. And So, yeah, no, of course he loves the Blue Jays that there was a soft landing spot for him, but it's not ideal for him to be signing a one-year deal considering the season he had. Blue Jays snap judgment. My next one. Okay. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Remembered that he has an elite eye. And the thing that actually is going to make him special being selective at the plate with the pitches is going to re unlock top 10 MVP ballot. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Okay. See, I had the opposite five walks. I like it. Four hits and a bomb. And to me, the, the most significant thing was he never looked like he was really pressing at the plate. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the, is the biggest sign of positivity from the entire Blue Jays weekend is just that this guy kept taking big pitches and good pitches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're hit, still going to go negative. Okay. Yeah, and he hit one over the fence. Yep. Like a cement mixer breaking ball. Yep. And it was one of the sick. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, wait, you're still going to cry about the fastballs. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the the most important thing. It was the thing that <laughs> kept him from having a good year a season ago. Was okay. like, it's cool to get into hitters counts and takes take walks. And yeah, took nearly a hundred walks in that twenty twenty one season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, having a four hundred on base is super valuable and mm-hmm. a thing that I thought was like it's the only guy that, it, that was going to be with him. five walks and you're going to be negative. Normally walks is your favorite thing. You'd no, rather see a walk. Say, than I'm not a negative. I'm yeah. just saying he hasn't shown me anything yet. Okay. All right. Ooh. Wow. All right. Hit a fastball. All right. Because in that same game that he hit the cement mixer 450 feet, which I, I got to believe was longer than 450 feet. You don't hit it over the yeah, batter's no. eye at the yeah. trop, and that's only 450 feet. I, I, thought, I thought the same thing where I went. Are we sure about how this system works nah, if that's what they said it I was? I feel like the Red Sox fans, after it. Rowdy Telez hit the ball further than Ted Williams, the, the, yeah. they're like, no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, yeah. 450, not, not, not actually how far that went. That was great. Yeah. And that's what you should do with the cement mixer breaking ball but the problem he had last year was punishing the mm-hmm. pitches that I'm so high on David Schneider for punishing like the middle middle up fastballs and hitters counts don't just like flare those to right field because in that same game first game of the season he got one of those in a hitters count mm-hmm. they hit it really hard minus like 500 launch angle mm-hmm. to right field ground out to first base right so like hit the fastball because mm-hmm. that's the team's problem was hitting fastballs last year an elite velocity so yeah, hit a fastball. It's good. Like, mm-hmm. you know me. I love walks. I'm not so going to say, say it's bad. I'm not going to say it's so bad. You say. And it's it's not, you know what? It's not a Kevin Biggio situation where it's like, yeah, man, you're getting passive. And eventually teams are going to catch on and throw you some fastballs and and you're going to have to swing it, swing the bat. I actually like this as the, the approach that Vlad's taking out of the gate and it's like showing the world. It's like, I won't be swinging at everything. I won't be swinging at your borderline pitches. You've mm-hmm. got to come to me. But then yeah. when that happens, like you have to park it. Mm-hmm. And also, just going back to a season ago, again, everybody's memory is so short. And, and nobody remembers the conversations we were having about Vlad figuring it out in the first month of the season to the tune of an 885 OPS and a ton of walks. And he hit five home runs. He had 13 walks, 14 strikeouts mm-hmm. in the month of April in 28 games. And then it just it all fell apart. Mm-hmm. So, no, it's not a bad sign, but... I'm not yet convinced. That's fine. And I will tell you that the whole point of this is not a smart guy segment. This is a clear dumb guy segment. This is, you and I have always said this. We want to bring back conversations in baseball that are just, Hey, this is how you feel like a ball. Yeah. This is how, yeah. Because that's fun with sports. What isn't David fun? David Schneider looks like a ball player. What isn't fun is breaking down everybody's woba all the time and being like, "Oh well, his woba is like woba. okay." I don't want to. I don't want to hear. Say woba. It is fun to say woba, but that's what that fun ends. <laughs> <laughs> the fun ends with the word. That's it. Uh, I want to have these kind of talks where you go. I feel this in my plums. Like I want to. I love this about a base about a series in baseball and especially this four games when the season starts and you get to do this stuff. Um, that said, uh, blue Jay snap judgments, Daniel Vogelbach won't be on this team in a month. Yeah. Cause this is the Daniel Vogelbach experience. Yeah, he we is had already Daniel gone. Daniel Vogelbach <laughs> in this city before <laughs> seen Daniel Vogelbach. You, people would be like, yeah. what? No, Daniel. Yeah. No, Daniel Vogelbach. Yeah. He's been around. I can't wait for Daniel Vogelbach to be on like the brewers and yeah. he rakes for of a course. month and every blue Jays fans uh, like, why did we let yeah. go of Daniel Vogelbach? That's going to happen. That's Daniel a, Vogelbach. Yeah. He's going to have an yeah. amazing month with the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> yeah. And people are going to be looking at it. No, you, the Brewers feels right because that's also the Rowdy Telez team. Yeah, yeah, he, that's like, why he got it. off to a great yeah, start. And yeah. then, you know what? He became Rowdy Telez again. Yeah, he did. And we you know 50% of the trade return starting yeah. tonight in Houston, Bowden Francis. No, you know what? He, he, Trevor Richards. I, I, Pirates. You killed, you killed that, that trade initially, but yeah, yeah it was a good one. Yeah. Like initially, Trevor Richards was mana from heaven. Imagine a bullpen in which. Trevor Richards and Adam Simber are the saviors, but that's what we were dealing with yeah. at the time of that trade. And then Bowden Francis, I mean, yeah, that would be huge. Yeah. If, that, if, if that, he's yeah. a if rotation, he's a, if he's a real guy, which I think he is. Also, did you see Austin Martin made his major league debut over the weekend? I, I, hold on. I actually have a thing. I didn't see that. Well, how was it? Over three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. whatever. So, so he had one game. Yeah. yeah, he he got into a game as a defensive replacement or a pinch runner or something, and then he started yesterday for the yeah. first time and went over three. But yeah, this is a guy. He's hitting ninth. I like. I think he's being forced into major league action because they're like, this is okay. the fifth overall pick. This is this is our Jose Barrios equivalent who's starting on opening day and looking nails for yeah. the Blue Jays. Like he's got to be something. I got news for you. He's nothing. <laughs> Oh my God, he's nothing. Okay, that's so funny. Uh, here's my next snap judgment. This doesn't have to do with the Blue Jays so much as it, well, it, it has to do with the Blue Jays, but uh, it wasn't from their game. Uh, Blue Jays snap judgments. 
Uh huh. I thought I was ready to turn the page on trades and decisions. Oh. I'm still obsessed with the Blue Jays that aren't here. And they, it's because they forced me to pay attention. Okay. Teoscar Hernandez. Uh, six hits, three bombs. Uh, OPS plus of 154 to start the season in 24 ABs. Just like crushing the baseball. Mm. Uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Three bombs, 10 rubies. <laughs> Uh, 315. That OPS. doesn't count. You, when you start your season in Colorado against the Rockets, it doesn't count. Okay. I'm just, I'm just saying that it, it was, a, they, those guys hit yeah. a lot of, yeah. they hit six home runs combined. No, your, your in, take going into last season is the correct one. Last two off seasons ago where it's like, if you just they kept overcorrected. it, yeah, yeah. if they, you just yeah. didn't do anything, just don't, don't do anything. Yep. You're doing too much. If they had not done anything, they probably hang in a world series banner. Well. Nah, I'm just whatever. I'm just, I have to be a little bit uh, <laughs> over the top of it, but no, I just, to, to me, again, looking back and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I really believe that what they, what they really got wrong was the fun quotient is that yeah. they thought there would be like a maturity to the team by removing a couple of guys. And in actuality it was like, nah, you actually need to be a fun baseball team in order to be an effective baseball team and turning it into like the professional uh, slog. Yeah. is only going to hurt these guys. And that's sort of what happened here. But yeah, anyways, uh, yeah. Um, I'm still obsessed with what Gabriel Moreno is doing. He yeah. had four RBIs. And again, yeah. you're right. Those ones don't count. Uh, but then this was the other one. This was the actual, and I watched a, a chunk of this. Like I had it on and I, I watched him pitch Jordan Hicks versus yeah. the Padres. Yeah. Hold on. Five innings pitched six K zero earned runs. Uh, and he didn't get that much more than Yariel Rodriguez. No, he wanted a rotation. He wanted yep. to start though. Right. Yeah. And that was the thing. And, and we've seen that backfire yep. on, on plenty of teams before, like Daniel Bard, yep. like his career was upended Yep. because the Red Sox tried to turn him into a starter. And yep. then some like by miracle of miracles, refigured it out and became an effective reliever again. But yeah, it wasn't about the money for that dude and good on him, at least in early returns. But like yeah. in spring, he was one of the stories it's like, oh, my God, this guy looks terrifying. And the Blue Jays just frank, like they they couldn't guarantee him a yep. rotation spot, no, right? Because they, they were like, Alec Manoa, we got to at least open the possibility of him returning to form. And if he shows anything, if he had been healthy, he would have been in this rotation. Plus Bowden Francis, like yeah. they, they had too many guys. Yeah, the... I think he has a little bit of David Price to him in the sense of no matter what he does, you're going to be able to point to those things. Yeah. But also if Manoa doesn't work out, then it, it does, it almost looks like a little silly to just say, Hey, we'll give you some runway here. We'll give you the fifth starter spot and see if he can earn his way back and then let the other guys push you out if it ends up happening. Anyways. And then, yeah, Matt Chapman, Two home runs and a yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares yep, about I Matt agree. Chapman. But I'm, all I'm saying is between Tasker and Andis, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. and Matt Chapman, they had eight home runs an opening weekend. So it was a just a reminder that I'm still a little obsessed with those guys, and that it's going to take um, some time before I'm making the comparisons. And by time, I mean like years. Yeah, <laughs> years. I didn't know we were allowed to do outside of the Blue Jay snap. No, no, but, it, but this one. is, but that's because this is connected. This is, sort no, it's, it's no, it's not sort of, it's very connected. We talked about IKF and the money he's making in before okay, yesterday. talk about a guy that we're going to see next weekend then. No, that's not a snap judgment. No, it's not. A, that one uh, save it for your show. Best, no, save it for your show. Bah, 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 bah. Save your show. <laughs> save it for your show. Uh, okay. Uh, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing snap judgments is, Randy Rosarena has now replaced Garrett Cole as the Blue Jays' number one uh, villain and killer. Is He's the guy in all of baseball. I would have said Yandy Diaz is more that guy. Oh, like, no. Rosarena for me. It, he makes that incredible play in the field. There's something about him when he steps up to the plate. Like, I just feel like he's okay, going so to make too? it. Yeah, he's the number one Jays villain. No, I know, but this counts. Okay, we can talk about Rays because I have one on Jose Caballero, who it's like the, you lose Wander Franco, who's like yeah. the cornerstone pillar of your franchise going forward. You paid him. You pay nobody, uh-huh. and you lose him for like forever. And then you get this like near 30 year old guy off the scrap heap who looks like he's a legit major leaguer and like kind of tortured the blue Jays. And as a result of him running into Yenesis Cabrera, you're, you're going to be without him for, for three games. And yeah, the, I mean, that's a snap judgment because it's only four games, but yeah, that they found something in Jose Caballero, who's a nobody, but like on the Rays, he's a somebody. Mm-hmm. Hey, on the Rays, everybody's a somebody except I think that the Rays turning over their pitching year over year and going, we can find pitchers. Right. We can find pitchers. I think it's done. I hope you're right. There's that's so my snap many, judgment I is God. that I, they, first of all, 
just the the two guys they had opening the season for them. Yeah. I went, that's who you got? No, I know. Savali is two? Yeah. You're in an opener in game four, and yeah. the bulk guy is the worst pitcher I've ever seen? Yeah. It feels like they have now hit a point of diminishing returns with the pitching from start to finish. Even the bullpen guys, the late inning guys that they brought in, they yeah. used to be, oh my God, everybody throws 100 and everybody's nasty. Everybody throws 100 yeah. with nasty breaking stuff. They their ranks is still good. And yeah. Adam is still good. Sure. Good. I, I'm just saying did, they're not a terrifying. The game is over bullpen anymore. They don't have the nasty long guys anymore. And their starting pitching looks thin, more thin yeah. than it has in the past. No, it's, I mean, you shouldn't be able to to lose. You really didn't feel the Randy Rose. I think you're dead wrong. I guarantee you that like I'm putting this out there actually as a poll is like, who are you most afraid of? Well, at I'm, a, the dish? I, I'm a little ga- gun shy because when he no. arrived on the scene in the postseason, I mean, you had <laughs> legitimate conversations about who you would trade for Randy Rose Arena. I would still to this no, day no, trade no, the entire Blue Jays roster like have for a 30 Andrew. homer season in a, in a career. I, like wh- if you told me who he was based on what I've seen of him, which is like killing Team Canada, yes. killing the Blue Jays, <laughs> no. that playoff run. Yeah, I would trade. And the stolen base stuff and the yeah. speed and like, yeah, the excitement too. Yeah. They, uh, they'd be like all of the Blue Jays roster yeah. for Randy Rosarena. I'd be like, we're getting a deal. I know, but like then you have to look at the baseball reference page and you're like, yeah, it's yeah, good. but that's the weirdest thing is he's the number one guy that when I watch doesn't match up with the full body of season baseball reference. I'm like, how is this even possible? No, how are the Rays even possible? How are they even in the conversation having Shane McClanahan, Drew Rasmussen, Shane Baz, Taj Bradley all injured for them? Yeah. No, it makes no yeah, sense. It but it's never made sense. No, I think it's. I, guess what? I think it's going to make sense I this year. I hope you're right. It's going to start to make a little bit of sense. Please. Yeah. Like just law of averages. You uh-huh. figure there's some sense to be made at some point. Yeah. All right. You got anything else? Uh, I think I may have been. I, I may have hit all mine. Yeah. Okay. I got one last one. George Springer is the biggest X factor of this Blue Jays team. Okay. I thought you were going to do it. You, were, you got a little gun shy because we talked about one of yours and how I was going to go against it. Before Which one? The, show, the, the Bo defense one. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I I didn't really love Bo's defense from the opening, but I think that that's one where I, it's not a snap judgment. I've never liked Bo's defense. He committed three errors in the first nine games last year in the same yeah. conversation. Yeah. We do this. He has like early season defensive issues. Yeah. But like, the, to be fair, the one error that he was charged with was totally on Vladdy. Yeah. Yeah. The throwing error. It's a long, yeah. ba- like you got to make that. Yeah. yeah. You, you got to. Yeah. If you consider yourself. A also, they defensive. charged who did. They charged it. Was it Kikuchi with an error on a bunt where it was like yeah. the infield single and they were like, it's an error. I went, that's really harsh. That was not yeah, a, I don't remember. Did he advance a second? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well then that's, yeah, it was very strange. I wonder if they corrected that one. Anyways, I just, yeah, Bo's opening weekend defense wasn't exactly inspiring. Would mm-hmm. you say like, <laughs> no, but again, like I've seen the early season slumps. Who cares? Back to the Springer thing. Yeah. That's, but that was my snap judgment. This wasn't it. See, no, I know. You know I thought you were being you, a coward. You I thought kinda, you were you being a coward. You kind of violated the trust that I have for you <laughs> in saying that. <laughs> I thought like, you were being a coward. I, I thought that conversations that we have off air <laughs> are not, the audience isn't privy to that. <laughs> okay. The audience is without privy. I shouldn't have brought that. To but now they know. Phone. No, I just, I, I watched Springer and he's hitting those home runs and I went, all of this season is going to come down to. Base, like we all made it about Vlad, 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 rightfully yeah. so, right? Because he's the future and he's the biggest conversation guy. But if they're going to win this year, there's no path to me yeah. without George Springer being a 850 plus OPS guy who hits for power in the leadoff spot and yeah. sets the tone with big at bats. And that's how I feel about this team is that he is after Vladdy because yeah. Bo is Bo, right? Yeah. I, I just, I don't think anybody believes that Bo isn't going to be who we expect him to be. Yeah, well soon. But George Springer is the most important X factor to this team's the, to this team all year long, and yeah. monitoring what he's doing at the plate, his body language, his health, his power. There's nothing more important outside of what they get from Vlad. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, it's interesting also that he's DH four games into the season with uh-huh. Justin Turner. We're told yeah. like he's not gonna play the field. Are you crazy? Yeah. Justin Turner's already played third base twice in two separate games. Now only started once. Yeah. But yeah, the more the IKF thing rears its ugly head, and the more you feel like you need to get. Uh, George Springer off his feet, and mm-hmm. maybe the more you want to find at bats for Davis Schneider, and there's no clear path for it. It'll be interesting to see how much third base, because like, yeah, you don't you don't care about chewing up uh, Justin Turner's legs for next season. He's on a one year deal, but yeah, you wonder how much third base he's going to play. I don't think that much. Yeah, I don't. I I think again, one was a start where they took a little peek, mm-hmm. and then the other one he's coming in late because they needed the yeah. bat. Yeah. And to me, that'll 
if, if you look at games played at third base at the end of the year for Justin Turner, my guess would be that the majority of them are not starts. Yeah. They're exactly what we saw this weekend where he's coming in to pinch hit, yeah. and then he f- closes the game playing third, and they're saying, God, we're behind. We need this to happen. Mm-hmm. It's like in the playoffs for the Leafs. I don't think that Max Domi is going to play up on the top line, but I do think that when they're trailing in hockey games, he's going to get more ice time, and you're going to go, oh, he played top six minutes. Yeah, they were trailing. They had nothing to lose. No, but your your Springer point is valid because I've talked about, hey, what that 89-win Jays team looks like with Vlad being a 900 OPS guy and mm-hmm. how that's like three or four wins. Yeah, we're, I mean, if George Springer is le- – like his average is George Springer last year, it's, it's basically the same difference. He was a league average hitter. This is a guy that's World Series MVP, of course, mm-hmm. right? And we've seen him at the peak of his powers at times carry this offense – and then get injured. Yeah. And he was healthy. It's like, yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. Pick your poison. Do you want the guy who is like on the verge of being injured for half the year, but elite elite or the guy who's always around, but like not that good. Yeah. I, I think I want the elite guy. Yeah. Elite. Well, and the thing I, I think that there's real proof of concept with this too, is if you remember in, was it 2021 where he had all the injuries or 2022, it was, he, well, yeah. he's had two years where he was hurt, but yeah. After those two seasons Although where we were he, told he wasn't hurt. Was yeah, like, but when he accumulated those two seasons of injuries and you looked at the Jays record with Springer versus yes. without, oh, yeah. it was startling. Yes. And so I view it same way as this year is you need him to be that guy again wow. who actually drives things for you. Well, and factually, nobody's going to get as many plate appearances as George Springer. Because yeah. as long as he's on this team, it does feel like, although he like, he was away from the, the leadoff spot for a second. It was Whit Merrifield for a second. No, and but then, then back I, up Blair. did you read Blair's column from last week? Yes. He was. He had some line in there that was, and they're never going to move George yes. Springer out of the one the, the leadoff yeah. spot because he will essentially. He's like he'll be right. pissed. Yeah. yeah, he will not. Yeah, he will not handle that. No, very so you well. can't have the guy taking the most plate appearances being a league average hitter. Yeah. Anyway, last snap judgment, and this one is very obvious, but uh, I think that the bullpen is going to be a pretty major point of conversation over the next couple of weeks. In oh, that, like in a negative way? I They're without, and that's natural because they're missing three key guys. Yeah. In fact, we keep talking about it as though it's only two. It's like, no, 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 they're missing three key guys because Yariel Rodriguez is supposed <laughs> to have like an important function for them. Sure. But no, I don't. Uh, it, it feels... It feels as thin as I expected it to. Like you know, it's funny. I actually feel the opposite way. I was like, to lose as many guys as they had. Like, there's enough guys that I don't feel horrible when they no, get no, into no. a baseball game. No, I'm not saying it's horrible because you're right. They do have enough guys. There is depth. Right? They lost their closer in the setup, man. And I'm That's like, a- yeah, Chad Green, like pretty good, and like yeah. Yeah, Jimmy Garcia, he can get the job done. And I know Yenesis Cabrera was DFA'd by the Cardinals and. Yeah. He wasn't the guy that we saw in Toronto when he was in St. Louis last year, but like what we saw in Toronto was pretty amazing. When they have, when they're going to be fully healthy, they're going to be one of the best bullpens in all of baseball. I hope anyways, assuming that those guys come back and they are themselves. And they are bullpens. So like they're very year to year. So correct. All I'm saying is it's a snap judgment. It's how my gut felt. Yeah. My gut felt when they were like, when all of these guys came in in their spots and it's natural because they're all bumped up. They're, they're all in positions that they kind of shouldn't be in. Yeah. I didn't feel comfortable at any moment. Yeah. I feel like Tim Mazur just gets no respect for the reliever he's been and how dominant he's been. And Trevor Richards, remember, we were having legitimate conversations about Trevor Richards mm-hmm. and leverage last year, um, and he's able to go multiple. And there's just like, there, there, there's nobody, and even, oh, my goodness, Mitch White, you know, doing the Mitch White thing. I mean, part of it was that Mazur gave up the run, and I went, uh yeah, uh, it was just one, but yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying that, uh, and yeah, Chad Green gave up the bomb. I don't know. I just, I didn't feel uh, super confident. They brought the guy I felt good about was Garcia, but that was because the broadcast went. These guys feel as though yeah, Garcia his matches, matches up, up against. And I went, raise. I'm sold. You guys yeah. are smart. You guys. Yeah. Are- <laughs> Swing baths and yeah. Yeah, I was like, they know way more than I do. So I felt it, it's actually, that's the power of suggestion really is showman goes, they love how he matches up. And I'm like, and then he got those outs and I went, that's right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So the machine is right. But no, yeah. Chad Green in that spot. And that was then, the same machine that's told them to pull Jose Barrios in the fourth inning though. Yeah. I don't like that machine. <laughs> they didn't destroy that machine. That machine is out there. Lurking. Maybe they made some tweaks. They sent it back to the shop. I don't know. I need that to know that they treated it like the printer and oh, or the fax yeah. machine and office space. Yes. Is that too old of a reference now? It's pretty old. Yeah, I know. Because that movie came out, what, like 1999? Yeah, Michael Bolton yeah. smashing the printer. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe too long. All right, quick Let's, break. Let's yeah. come back.